I now would like to proceed with the second part of the announcement. And I need to just um, give a word of caution that it is not the most comfortable announcement that you've heard in this masjid. It's a part of a long announcement. Please bear with me. And it's been a week in our country when I think each and every South African should hang his head or her head in shame. I repeat, it's not a comfortable announcement, but certain things have to be said. You cannot just wipe them under the carpet. As Sheikh Abdul Rahman has mentioned, we heard the news on Wednesday that a father hanged four of his children in Durban this week. Also, and this is where the uncomfortability comes in, a young boy gets raped in a toilet in a masjid in Peter Maritzburg. Uncomfortable, Jamaat, uncomfortable, but it's happening. Do not go into denial. Then we had the xenophobic violence taking place in Johannesburg and Pretoria. And I'm still trying to understand, and I've discussed it with the Imam, what is this whole issue? Because 80% of the land in this country is not in the hands of black people. The best jobs in this country is not in the hands of black people. Yet, this violence unashamed, unashamedly has been black upon black. And it seems as if we have forgotten who gave us refuge and shelter and support when we were fighting against the white tyranny of this country. It was countries like Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Nigeria that gave us all the support so that we could overthrow the tyranny of the white rule in this country. But it seems like today it's been forgotten. And what is even more forgotten sometimes is that our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself migrated. He had to flee Makkah to Medina. The only difference was that the people of Medina welcomed him with open arms. And last week on Thursday, when Sheikh Abdul Rahman and I entered this masjid for Maghrib, there was a bigger number of people than normal in this masjid. And upon inquiry, we discovered that not one, but two of our Bangladesh brothers, Janaza, was about to take place. These were people who left the shores of their homeland, came across the oceans to come and settle in a foreign country which they call Africa, South Africa. They come to Cape Town and then they proceed to a small little place called Marmersbury, opening up a tuck shop, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week so that they could have a piece of bread for themselves and I know many of them feed their families back home in Bangladesh. And a maniac comes and he pumps bullets into the bodies of these two people. These people, the Bangladesh community, we must not forget, are doing exactly what our forefathers did when they came here a hundred years ago. They came for a better life. The only difference is that when our forefathers came, they came into a detested apartheid state. They are today coming into a gangster state. Wednesday night in Philippi, two metro police were killed. And in case you are wondering, Jamaat, what is that ping sound that's going on in this masjid today? There's nothing wrong with the equipment. There's everything wrong with the country. For every 29 seconds, a woman is raped in this country. And that ping is to remind our conscience. 8th of August, Megan Kramer, 30 years old. 22nd of August, Lynette Falshenk, her body chopped up, chopped up, chopped up. 30th of August, Leandre Jagels, on the same day, Jesse Hess murdered together with her 85-year-old grandfather on the 1st of September. I told you it's uncomfortable. Janika Mello, 14 years old from Heinz Park. And then on the 2nd of September, 
the event that has shocked the entire world. 19-year-old UCT student, Yuinene Medwatiana. All this happens in the month of August, which is supposed to be a month dedicated to our beloved woman. Something has gone wrong, Jamaat. Something has gone seriously wrong. And today, from this masjid, we echo those words, enough is enough. Our women and our children are living in fear. All this because men are the problem. Perverted men are the problem. And I hope not, but if there's a perverted man sitting in this jamaat, shame be upon you. They must realize, these perverted men, that they don't own women. Woman is not their property. It is not the object of lust. And please, don't, be hide, don't hide behind that facade that if a woman doesn't dress the way you think she should be dressing, or if she goes to work, or if she talks the way you feel she mustn't talk, you can use that as an excuse to do these things to her. All men must hang their heads in shame today because of what fellow perverted men are doing. The message from this masjid is very clear. Supported by the imams, stop raping our woman, stop murdering our woman, stop this femicide. If you really want to apply the rules of Sharia, this finger is not even allowed to touch the body of a woman that is a stranger to me. That is how strict the Sharia is in terms of the relationship between a man and a woman. A woman are too precious a gift that has been bestowed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, we will be requesting Sheikh Ismail when he leads the Salah, inshallah, in the second rakat, once again, to recite the kunut in that Almighty Allah must protect our women, protect our children, protect our nation, and save us from this tyranny that has befallen us. I've taken a little bit of time. I hope you do understand. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.